Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and I'm back again with another Bujo Babble. After a little bit of an unintentional hiatus, I didn't mean to take so long between Bujo Babble episodes, it just kind of happened that way. But I'm back again today setting up a Themes of 2019 spread where I'm creating little mini versions of my cover pages throughout 2019. And while I do that, I'm going to be talking about a subject that has been really on my mind recently, and that subject is gatekeeping. Urban Dictionary defines gatekeeping as an individual taking it upon themselves to decide who does or does not have access or rights to a community or identity. How does this apply to bullet journaling, you might ask? Well, gatekeeping is happening every single time someone tries to invalidate someone else's bullet journal. And I see comments and videos and posts doing just that literally every single day. I've talked about this before. My first ever Bujo Babble episode was touching on this very thing, on the rift between people who follow the original system of bullet journaling, as writer Carol presented it when he first wrote about the system on his website, and people who are more into the artistic side of bullet journaling, and what's currently popular on Instagram and Pinterest and YouTube. As I explained in that video, I don't think there is anything wrong with either form of bullet journaling or anything in between. I highly recommend you go watch that video if you're interested in hearing more on the two forms of bullet journaling and my opinion on it, but this video is going to focus specifically on the gatekeeping in our community. Of course, gatekeeping is nothing new and it's definitely not exclusive to the bullet journaling community. Gatekeeping happens in just about every community you could imagine. An example that comes to mind I was reminded of recently in watching an Anthony Padilla video where he was talking to people who identify as asexual, and they brought up the fact that asexual people are often excluded from the LGBTQ plus community. Not by everyone, of course, but there are a lot of people, whether within or without the LGBTQ plus community, who don't see asexual people as part of the community. And that is 100% the definition of gatekeeping. People are trying to tell other people that their identity isn't valid and that they don't deserve to claim the identity as an LGBTQ plus person. Another example happens in the vegan community all of the time. I can't count the number of times I've seen someone accusing someone else of not being a real vegan for one of a million different reasons, effectively excluding them from the community and trying to control their ability to claim that identity. While I do understand the basic psychology behind having these feelings of wanting to rigidly define groups that you belong in and to maintain those rigid definitions by pushing people who you feel straddle the line out of the community altogether, it doesn't mean that I agree with it, because I definitely do not. I personally think that gatekeeping sucks, and while we could talk about gatekeeping in a general sense, I want to focus this video on gatekeeping in the bullet journaling community specifically. I think what bothers me the most about the gatekeeping I see in the bullet journaling community and what I experience personally in the form of comments on my videos and posts online is that what I do in my bullet journal shouldn't impact literally anyone else. Obviously, I share my bullet journal, I create videos of the process, I talk about bullet journaling, I post pictures of my spreads, I even encourage people to recreate them if they so wish, but I have never once told anyone consuming the content I create that they have to bullet journal the way I do. In fact, I make a point of mentioning in almost every single video I make that bullet journals are individual and every single one is unique, and that if what I'm doing doesn't work for you, you shouldn't try to force yourself to do it, just like you shouldn't try to force yourself to bullet journal the way anyone else does if it doesn't work for you. So understandably, I get frustrated when I continually get comments telling me that my bullet journal is invalid for one of a million reasons that shouldn't have anything to do with it. 
Does the fact that I replaced a pair of broken scissors with a gold pair and around the same time bought a mini gold ruler that I could take with me on the go mean that my bullet journal isn't a bullet journal? No, of course not, because the color of your supplies has literally nothing to do with it. What about my nails? Does having long nails that are painted have anything to do with if my bullet journal is in fact a bullet journal? No, again, of course it doesn't, because the length and color of someone's nails has no bearing on whether they use a planner or a bullet journal or a regular journal or a diary or literally anything else. What about the one I hear the most often? The fact that I enjoy painting in my bullet journal must invalidate my bullet journal, right? Again, of course not. Writer Carol himself has said so many times that your bullet journal can contain art, can be a sketchbook, can look and be whatever you want it to be. The fact that I enjoy painting and drawing and creating artistic spreads has no bearing on whether my bullet journal is a bullet journal or not. It also doesn't impact the productivity of my bullet journal as much as people seem to be concerned about. I am sure that there have been times in the history of the world that someone making an artistic spread might have slightly reduced or completely eliminated the productivity of that spread. But just because someone makes a spread look pretty doesn't mean that it's not also productive. Two things can exist simultaneously and not cancel each other out. I speak both English and French, and that doesn't mean that I now don't speak either, or that one doesn't count. You can be multiple things at once. And so can your bullet journal, because your bullet journal is a reflection of you. I love being creative. I love painting. I love drawing. I love designing things. It is one of my passions and favorite hobbies. I also love lists and getting things done and trying to rein in my very easily distracted mind to get shit done on time and to the best of my ability. Those two parts of me exist simultaneously, both in my mind and in my bullet journal, because my bullet journal is a paper representation of what is going on in my brain. And just like people can be both beautiful and smart, my bullet journal can be both aesthetically pleasing and productive. I think it is so reductive to narrow the definition of a bullet journal down so small that only certain people fit within it. What is the point of completely eliminating the diversity in this community? I have said it a million times and I will probably say it a million more, but the diversity is the best part of the community. How boring would it be if every single person's bullet journal looked exactly as Ryder Carroll's original bullet journal system did? Everyone uses the same pen. Everyone uses exactly the same symbols. No one ever comes up with a new type of spread or uses a new color or decides to have a theme. I think the vast majority of people who are currently bullet journaling and getting the benefits from it wouldn't be bullet journaling if that was what the community looked like. Why is it so important to so many people to tell others that what they're doing isn't good enough or isn't right? Why not focus on your own life and your own bullet journal? Make it the best it can be. Make it work perfectly for you. Make it beautiful if you want or not if you want. Make it yours and ignore worrying about what other people are doing. If you enjoy taking in inspiration and seeing other people's bullet journals, then totally go for it. I know I love that part of the community. But if you find yourself about to leave a comment on something someone has spent a lot of time and effort on, something that is a representation of who they are as a person and what they care about and what they love, telling them that their bullet journal isn't legitimate because of X, Y, and Z, maybe take a step back and think before you type. Because what right have you to tell someone else that their bullet journal isn't valid? What do you get from it? Does it make you feel superior? Does it make you feel justified somehow? Let's go into this new decade just letting every single person make their bullet journal the way they want and need to. We are all valid and we all belong in this community. Every single bullet journal in existence is different from every other, and that's the way it should be. Diversity is beautiful. 
And it upsets me when I see people trying to crush individuality and encourage conformity. Because that is not how we grow as a society or as a community or as individuals. Please let me know in the comments down below an experience you've had with gatekeeping, whether it's specifically an experience within the bullet journaling community or in another part of your life. I think it's important that we talk about this more and shine a light on this behavior. It seems to be getting worse over time when you'd think it would start to get better. This is a love letter to every single one of you who are so loving and supportive and create your own unique, badass bullet journals every single day. And you are all what make this community so freaking epic and make me proud to be a Bujo tuber. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a like if you think this is a message that needs to be heard. Consider sharing it within bullet journaling communities you are a part of. Don't forget to let me know in the comments about an experience you've had with gatekeeping in your life. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to keep up with all of my upcoming content. I want to take a moment to shout out my patrons. They are the best Bujo squad a cat lady like me could ever hope for. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Radioactive Starfish, Lori, Anna, Julie, and Becca. Welcome all of you to the squad. I'm so excited to have you. If you at home want to join the squad, check out the link in the card or in the description box down below. And that is it for today's video. I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye, friends.